Women lean towards monogamy because society tells them to. You know what my take is? This is my speculative take on why monogamy start being. Because if society didn't promote monogamy, womanizing alpha males would monopolize all the women. If you're not aware of who this gentleman is, this is Alan Roger Curry. He's the father of Mode One Approach, which is direct approach by making your intentions known from the beginning. And he's a good example of why when you're consuming information, you need to check your emotions and consume the information because his information is spot on. There was this lesbian blogger that some of my Facebook friends used to follow because she would always post a lot of strong opinions and commentary about stuff. And she said something that was so true, man, that I, at least I co-signed with it. I can't remember exactly where it's, so I'm going to be paraphrasing, but she essentially said, she said beta males should be so happy that there's things called money and material possessions. Because she said if there was no such thing as money and material possessions, she said y'all beta males would never get laid. She said only alpha males would be getting laid. If you consume this information without getting emotional, he's right. It mirrors the black community, really. You have a group of alpha men that are doing a good bit of the dating and are having all of the dating selection that they can handle. And then you have a group of beta men who are blamed for what the alpha men are or aren't doing and are expected to be cleanup guys. To a large degree, I believe that, man. I believe that's why society promotes marriage and monogamy, man. It's a way of evenly distributing, it, distributing out female companionship to guys who otherwise would do... A lot of you guys out here believe that money and material possessions is the number one key to pulling women. And that could be so much further from the truth. Remember that two episodes ago, I was talking about how I've been a woman's other man at least 35 to 40 times in my life. Like I was the man that a woman was having sex with while she was cheating on her husband, her fiance, or her long-term boyfriend. Do you know at least a good percentage? I would say of all the women who I was the other man, I would say at least no less than 25% of those women had husbands, fiancés, or boyfriends who was making way more money than me. I want to reiterate what I said about separating emotion from the information. The information that Alan Roger Curry is giving here is that in the Western culture, for a select group of men, they can basically have their pick of the litter, even if women are in so-called committed relationships. And so the boundaries that you might expect to come from a guy that's working hard and he thinks in a committed relationship, but he doesn't have the riz or whatever that that woman might like. Well, she can get the guy that makes her tingle. And if that relationship dissolves, we know who pays for it. If you live in a community that lives by the kind of mating practices that Alan Roger Curry is speaking of, then what it leads to is an erosion of boundaries. So there are boundaries where married people should or shouldn't do things. And as those boundaries slowly get eroded, you start seeing adaptations like this. This is another one that I know is gonna make y'all upset. You ready to get mad? My friend's husband just came over and helped me install so much stuff in the house. New, he helped me replace the chandelier, take, take down the old one. He helped me uh, replace the toilet seat that was broken upstairs. And he installed a thermostat and connected it to Wi-Fi for me. For, for a meal. Because he's a good guy. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't think, I don't think y'all understand the comfort and security that comes with having well-meaning platonic friends in your life who go, yeah, girl, take my husband for an hour and a half. He'll do whatever you need to do in the house. God bless y'all. I love my friends. If you look at this from an old school perspective, a boundary was immediately crossed when a married man went into a single woman's home with his wife not there. But when you have eroding boundaries, this is called community. And when folks don't have it or understand it, they side eye it. 5,000 likes. I call that a husband-in-law. They're the best. Precisely, community is slipping from us as we hold on to insecurities. This made me realize husbands are like boats. You don't need to have one. You just need a friend who owns one. And the last one, the number one thing that I miss moving from my hometown is losing my friend's husband who used to take care of my car for me. These are examples of a society where boundaries are eroding. And if you're coming from a society thinking that these kind of boundaries are normal, when you go overseas, you have another thing coming. 
there was this one woman when I lived in Los Angeles. She was beautiful blonde. She was Caucasian. Um, used to drive a Porsche 911. Man, her fiance, he was like a, either a millionaire or close to being a millionaire. He like owned some kind of computer software company or something. Yeah, man. And I, at the time, I think I was making like 30, 35 grand a year, dude. So if money was the number one key to pulling women, how would I be able to f this woman when her fiance is, is a millionaire? Countries and cultures around the world have had to find practical ways to deal with not just bait pairing, but infidelity. If you don't deal with infidelity, you get something like the black community where there's a incentive structure that is a bit upside down in that if you are a value a person in terms of what you're able to do but you're in the wrong package you are not valued except for your resources and if you are the opposite in the right package you are getting a lot more attention than you would normally get in a more functional culture the way that japan deals with that is the amount of consolation money in a divorce in japan varies depending on the cases and can vary depending on your divorce lawyer. However, the amount is usually small in most cases, for example, a few million yen, which you can sue not only your spouse for, but the person your spouse cheated for. And that would be roughly about $27,000, $28,000. Now you heard Alan Roger Curry's story where he said he was making 30,000 a year. Imagine the guy who is working on cars he cheats on your wife and you could sue him for a year's salary you think that's not a deterrent one thing that's very important for guys going overseas to understand is that boundaries are important they matter if you're a married man you should not be going into a single woman's apartment unless you truly understand that situation and if you are a single man and you're going to a married woman's apartment when the husband is not there you really need to know what you're doing otherwise you shouldn't be there because the mere accusation can get you in trouble i can't speak in depth about the situation in the philippines but according to this article from the insider in the Philippines, men and women who have sex with someone other than their spouse could face jail time. So does the person they cheat with. I'm imagining it's relatively liberal for people who aren't married yet, but I do know that the Philippines takes marriage quite seriously because of the way they deal with divorce. Well, they don't technically allow divorce yet. And so this is one example where you might be in a situation with someone that you might not think is married or is married and you're thinking ah mar being with a married woman is no big deal and you can see that it's a possible big deal here in indonesia sharia law forbids adultery if someone is caught they can go to jail for up to nine months so if you're in indonesia obviously you wouldn't want to do that right or taiwan you're sentenced for four months in jail they're called the law archaic but again this is a regular normal country you might be there and think it's not a big deal but everywhere is not as liberal as america is like i said earlier in this video it's important to separate the information from the emotion that the information may elicit because everything that alan roger curry said is the truth what i'm telling you is that if you're going to a country overseas they may have found a way to deal with that human truth by implementing a certain set of laws so that they can build and maintain family and societal structure. So if you're going overseas and you're thinking that you're gonna operate the same way that you would in America, because in America it's always worked, it's not the same, especially if you're dealing with situations as a married couple, because let's be honest, marriage is not seen as the most important thing in america anymore but everyone doesn't think the same way make sure you understand that because there are some places where getting married is still a big deal and they will make you honor that marriage in one way or the other gentlemen be very careful of the situations you put yourself in around married women because simply put some cultures still value the fidelity of marriage Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, comment below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.